Before you take down a narcissist, one of the first things you got to keep in mind, and this is number one, is that narcissists seem to be wired backwards. We're talking about empathy. Now, most people have empathy. That is to say they care about other people. They put themselves, we put ourselves in other people's shoes. We understand their perspective and uh, we know what they're going through. But a narcissist that is wired backwards where he cares about himself or she cares about himself and very little, if at all, about other people. Where, again, typically the average person, neurotypical person, cares about others, but they have enough empathy for themselves, for self-preservation, and for their family. So number one, when we start to take down a narcissist, we got to keep this in mind. What kind of a critter are we dealing with? What kind of an animal, if you will, uh, are we, are we up against? What kind of a traits are there that we need to face? Number two is um, if you're going to take down a narcissist, don't allow him or her to push your buttons. That's going to take a little bit of explaining, but probably not too much. Well, when we say push your buttons, another way to say it is don't let them uh, trigger you. We're talking about your emotions. Another way people say it is don't let them see you sweat. So uh, don't let them make you angry because, well, that's their objective. That's what gives them a rush. That's what gives them supply. Supply being defined as anything that boosts the ego of a narcissist. So if a narcissist can make you mad, uh, you're playing into his hands. So if you get mad, and sometimes it's hard not to, if you get angry, make sure that you hide that emotion, mask it. Don't let the narcissist see it. Don't let the narcissist make you jealous. Don't let the narcissist wish that uh, you could somehow repay him, you know, tit for tat. Because that's what narcissists love. They love to have the fight. They love the fact that they have lured you into the fight. So if they have lured you into the fight, you know, that means they're controlling you. It's kind of like a puppet on a string. The uh, puppet master makes the puppet move by pulling his strings. And one of the strings, the... Uh, the narcissist pulls is one that makes you angry, one that makes you uh, want to get back, get even, one that makes you want to do tit for tat. All of these strings he's pulling, and we think our reaction is perfectly normal. No, they're doing that to us on purpose just to get our response, to get a reaction. So the narcissist thinks, well, he doesn't just think, he actually is in control. Don't let the narcissist control you by allowing him to push your buttons. Probably a better way of saying that. Number two should be don't let him pull your strings. Number three is uh, let them make the mistakes. Years ago when I was, I don't know, maybe 18, 19 years old, uh, I was enrolled part-time in a, in a college, small little college, and one of the pastimes was play ping pong. And there's one guy that worked there. He was uh, an accountant, and uh, you couldn't beat him. Nobody, nobody could beat this guy. And he's just amazing because all he would do is hit the ball back. He didn't try to put a spin on the ball. He didn't have any fancy moves. He just perfected the science of returning whatever you, whatever you threw at him. He could just send it right back to you. So eventually he would win because he didn't make any mistakes. You did or his opponent would make the mistakes. Well, do that to the narcissist. And by the way, the narcissist makes a lot of mistakes. But if you do nothing, just, uh, you know, just bat the ball back to him. Become a perfectionist at doing nothing. You know, just no spins, no fancy shots, no try to uh, get him, don't try to stab him in the back, figuratively speaking. Don't do any of that. When I say him, I mean him or her. But uh, let them make the mistakes. And the, the, the narcissist makes a lot of mistakes. In fact, their whole life is just one string of mistakes. And eventually people figure that out. Some people a little bit slower than others. Some people are new to this guy's environment, to his web. So they don't see it immediately. But don't worry, they'll catch on. Most people will catch on. Number four is deny abuse by refusing to respond so the narcissist, we kind of already covered this, but now we're going to articulate it a little bit clearer, is the narcissist abuses you by getting you to respond, to react again by pulling your string and watching you respond. Well, what is that? That is the way the narcissist abuses you. So you may be undergoing narcissistic abuse 
and not even know it. You may think your responses are just natural, that you're just doing what, what you think you should be doing, and that is fighting off the narcissist by giving him back what he gave you. He throws a punch, you throw a punch. You don't realize that that is a form of abuse. You didn't realize that. You thought when he punched you, that was abuse, but when you punch back, you're abusing him. Not necessarily, because again, they love to fight. That's what these people do. It doesn't matter if they win or lose. To them, just the fight is the win in and of itself. Number five, we talk about this in uh, a lot of times in other videos, and that is to take down a narcissist. One thing you really need to do is document. Uh, some people call that doxing. Just keep track of what's going on. Now, how do you do that? Well, you do it with... Um, uh, recording dates. Sometimes you just take notes and here's what happened this date. But the best way to do it, in my opinion, if it's legal in your state, remember we talked about this before, is get a video recorder, get an audio recorder. You know, usually your cell phone is sufficient and record what this guy says. Record what she says. If it's legal in your jurisdiction, all you got to do is find out. Another way to do that, doxing as well, get on the website and public records because chances are this person if they've been a narcissist for a very long time they've probably been hauled into court more times than you could imagine i know narcissists have been taken to court multiple times a lot of these people they are so selfish they don't pay their bills well guess what they wind up um, they wind up getting sued some of these people are so so um adamant and refusing to be controlled they quit their jobs because they don't want to do what the boss tells them to do ever even if it's a good boss. I mean, I don't like to be bossed around either, but I'm not going to quit my job over it. But these guys will. Consequently, some of them, not all of them, this is uh, probably, I don't know, maybe half of them, but they'll quit their job because they don't want to be bossed around, and now they don't have any money. So what do they do? Well, a lot of times uh, they file bankruptcy. Well, that's in public records, and they do other things because, well, they don't have resources. Sometimes they get involved in uh, illegal activities. Not going to talk about those other than just stealing and, and the check kiting, that type of thing. Uh, number six is no psycho shutdown. So what the narcissist will do when we say psycho shutdown, what the narciss narcissist rather will do is he or she will try to get inside your head. Use psychology on you. Change the subject is probably a better way to say it. So what you got to do is stick to the core subject. Well, what is the core issue here? What is the what is the basis of this? Well, the basis of this is you're dealing with a person who has a personality flaw, and that is they are narcissists. You gotta you gotta focus with laser light intensity on that reality. This is a dishonest person. It's not about you. It's about the narcissist, and you got to keep that in mind because the narcissist will. At least in my experience, the narcissist will make it about the victim every single time without exception. Number seven is, okay, well, what are you going to do? You're not going to do tit for tat. You're not going to throw punches. Well, what you are going to do is you're going to counter the lies. This is what I do, I should say. Counters the lie, counter the lies with the truth. So don't use the narcissist tactic of lying. You say, well, he's lying about me. She's lying about me. I'm going to get her back. I'm going to get him back. I'm going to lie about him and her. Well, then you're going to get caught in your lies, and people are going to think that you are the issue, that you are the problem. And the narcissist has been telling them that all along, you know, that you're the problem. Well, now you're just validating that because you're duplicating. You're becoming a carbon copy of the narcissist because, well, you're doing what he does. You're doing what she does. So, you know, stick to the core issue and stick to the truth. Reality is always consistent. You can never, uh, people can distort reality, but it's not a true distortion. It's just uh, pretense. So number eight is, and I kind of like this one, it is enjoy outsmarting the narcissist. How do you outsmart the narcissist? By not doing what the narcissist does, by not being that carbon copy that we talked about before. He or she does not expect that because most people don't know. The narcissist has a long history, a lot of experience in abusing people, and he knows what to expect. She knows how they're going to respond. 
But you're not doing that. You're doing it totally different, and uh, you're, you're catching them off guard. You're taking them down, and they, now they don't know what to do. So you are actually outsmarting, defeating the narcissist. You are now empowering yourself using uh, strategies that the narcissist is wholly unaware of. Have fun. Do it, you know. Number nine is be patient. Just give it time. I think one of the huge mistakes that a lot of people make is uh, they think that uh, they need to take down the narcissist right here and right now before this thing goes any further. But the truth of the matter is sometimes it takes time. In fact, I would say sometimes it could take years before the narcissist finally gets the message that there's no supply to be had with you. In fact, it's actually negative supply. So what the narcissist wants is to boost his or her ego. That's what it's all about. But what he finds happening is because you have learned these strategies and are applying them, not only is his ego or her ego not being boosted, but it's actually losing air. They're losing supply. Their ego is being depleted. When that happens, they're going to get away from you as quickly as they can because that's what their whole life is about. They have this ego enhancement dependency, and uh, without that, there's, there's really, with these people, I think some of them, there's no purpose in that living. It's like any other dependency. See those two rectangles on the screen? If you enjoy what you heard, want to hear some more, click on one of those two rectangles, and you and I will keep hanging out together. If not, thanks for stopping by, and see you all next time.